Hey, I hope you're doing well today. And today I have a really crazy social media automation for you, which handles Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok all in one automation. And you can do it all just from your phone. So I'll give you a little demo on how it all works and I'll go through how I made it all. So it all starts with our agent called Borg and its whole purpose is just to save links to an Airtable. So I'm gonna show you from my perspective how we would use this on our own phone. So I'm just gonna put the table up on the screen and all we have to do is you see these videos here, we just simply copy the link we go over to Telegram and we paste it in. So this is a TikTok link right here that we can see, okay? And the agent will respond with done at the bottom. And then that's a link saved straight to our table. So you can see it, see it on the table right there. Uh, we'll take an Instagram link as well. So let's go over here, copy that link, paste it in here and send, okay? Then we get another done notification. You'll see it pop up on the table. Now let's also get a YouTube video. Here we go, very simple. Copy link, paste it in here, and boom, we're done. So as you can see, we have a TikTok link, we have an Instagram link, and a YouTube link, okay? So we've got three different platforms in the one table. Now what I'm gonna do is actually execute this. Now, obviously you can execute this via the phone, but I just want you to see all the animations and how it all works as well. So I'll just press test workflow. So the first one that's gonna run is the Instagram. It's gonna get the data for the video, get the video as well, transcribe it, update all our tables, okay? And then go through everything here and start repurposing this script. So if we actually jump over to our table right here for the repurpose output, we can see this script and this video, okay, is already in here. So we can actually see the YouTube video now coming up and we have the original script, which is a transcription and we'll shortly get a script as you can see right here okay so this is a very short video so I suppose it's not a very long script uh, now we also have the TikTok video okay so we have the TikTok video coming in we've got the original script right here and we'll have a repurpose script there we go just like that okay so we have all of these scripts for any platform anything that you want and the great thing about this is the idea here is that you're going to be on your phone, you're gonna be scrolling your social media, TikTok, your YouTube, and your Instagram, right? And the whole idea here is that as you're scrolling along, you might say, oh, that's a nice video, I should repurpose that, right? So you save that video, you post it to Telegram, it goes straight over to the table, which would appear here, okay? And then you'll see a YouTube short that you like. Okay, I'll, I'll get that as well. Then I'll see an Instagram link, I'll take that as well. So you're just building up all of these links as you're just casually, you know, on social media, right? And then all you have to do is just execute that and we get everything here, repurpose scripts with the original videos as well, just so we can double check how they filmed everything and we're good to go. All right, let's go into how I made all this. So starting off, the API that actually this runs off is really, really cheap, okay? So if you look at the API here, we have this social download all in one. Now this is only going for, obviously you have the free plan, which is $0, but for 6,000 requests a month, it's only $2 a month, okay? And this allows you to get 6,000 videos per month, which is gonna be, for most of you, more than plenty, okay? So this is why this is such a really powerful API, which is gonna be really good for our automation as well. We'll just go over the Instagram one here because generally across all three, they're quite similar, okay? So uh, what's happening here is that it's executing by another workflow. I have the define using fields below, and then I have the workflow input schema, and then it's just name, execute, and that's a string. Now, the reason why I have that set is because if I go back to this agent right here, and I have this execute another workflow, okay? So if I click that, we'll see here, I have called this tool to execute the repurposer. So basically all I have to do is send the word execute, and this whole workflow here will start, okay? So that's how that works. Now, going to the Airtable node here, what this is doing is just simple. All I'm doing here is just retrieving links which I have in this table. So this table right here with the repurposed links, the links where we're saving and we send them to Telegram and they get put here, this is all that the Airtable node is doing. It's just retrieving these links so that we can see them in the workflow. Okay, so you'll see here in the output, we have the links coming in, record IDs and status to do, okay? After that, we now have a switch, okay? So this is just routing things 
to different areas, all right? So obviously if it's an Instagram link, it's going down Instagram. If it's a YouTube link, it goes down YouTube. And if it's a TikTok, obviously it goes to TikTok. So you can see the setup here. All I've said is uh, we have the JSON right here, the expression right here, which is just the links to videos. And if the actual field does include the word or contain the word Instagram, then of course it goes down Instagram and the same thing for YouTube and the same thing for TikTok. Okay, so that's just alerting it where to route each link and everything as well. So from the switch, we're going up this line here straight into a loop. And all this is doing is just looping each link one by one. Now, of course, for this example, I only have one link in here, right? But ideally what would be happening here is that let's say I had 40, 50, 200 different links, okay? And it would actually go through and loop and come back around and take the next link and come back around and then take the next link. So that link would then be transferred over to this HTTP request. So if we open up this, we can see the endpoint URL for this uh, API right here. And we can see the setup. So it's just X rapid API key. We have the host in here as well, content type application JSON. And then we just have the JSON uh, set down below here with URL. And the links to videos is just this link right here, just dragged over there. And that's gonna put the link through and actually get the video for that. Now the output, as we can see right here, now this isn't actually generating a video yet, okay? But it's providing a URL to that video. So now we're actually using a get, okay? And see this URL right here? I've just placed it straight in here, okay? And we can see the result right here as well. Okay, now from that point, once we get that file, if I tested that step, this is the output. We're gonna get this data, bi binary data. So this is the actual video. So if I view that, there you go. That's a video that I saved on Instagram for. I have no idea what it is. But anyway, that is what it's seeing. Now, since we all already have that data now, that data can actually be processed by Whisper. And Whisper is what you use for transcribing videos um, by OpenAI, you know, ChatGPT. This, this data here is now being transferred over to Whisper and then Whisper is transcribing it so we can see the transcription right here, okay? And basically, if you had more links, it'd be coming back around, fetching the next link and then processing it through all these nodes and coming back around and so on and so forth, okay? But in this case, it's just come around. It's only got one link and it said, oh, we're done. Okay, so we're going to continue and we come up to Instagram complete. Now, this is very, very simple. All I've said here is just a way to say that we've already done these links before, okay? So that when they're initially put in here, they have a status of to do, okay? So that's just alerting us that, oh, we haven't repurposed this video before. So once it's coming back around and actually meets this node right here, the status will then be set to completed, okay? So then we also know from our end that this video is done. So coming down further, we can see Instagram create. So again, this is just very, very simple. We have that original transcript, okay, that was provided from Whisper. And I've just added that in here. And that just gives us a backup of the original script as well. You know, everything that they said, just to make sure everything is aligned, you know, repurpose script as well, which it will be. But just as a backup, it's a, you know, just a little thing there. And then we also have the link to the original video because we also need to see the original video from time to time. You know, maybe we don't shoot the video till a week later, right? So now we can also click to this video and say, oh, okay, that's how they shot the video. This is how they're talking. This is how they edited it. So now we get some good information as well. Moving on from there, of course, we just have a set node here. And this is just getting the ID, which in this case is actually the record ID. Let me bother changing it. And then we also have the original script and that's being passed again through another looping mechanism here. So we can see right here, this is gonna get the scripts one by one and then pass them through. And this is a little bit uh, different, right? So what this is doing actually, okay, is actually, it's a calculation of characters, okay? So see the original script right here. This actual code is calculating how many characters are in this original script. Now, the reason for that is important because when I query the AI to make this repurposed script, I don't want it to exceed the character um, length of the original script either, okay? So, and that's what I feel is a big problem these days is that, okay, we wanna repurpose a script and then it repurposes a script and it's like twice as long, three times as long, or it could be shorter, or it could be even 
40, 30 percent longer than the original script. I don't want that. I want it to be as close as possible to that original script as it possibly can be. And that's important because we want to be below one minute in time as well for our videos. Generally, anyway, we want to be. Um, and that's kind of a good limit. So now once this, it goes through this calculation, it counts all the characters, everything like that, I've actually set it to just say, repurpose the original script in no more or less than 548 characters. So this number right here is actually generated from this code right here. And this will be dynamic. So it generates the uh, characters depending on whichever script that you put in. It might be a thousand characters for you know some cases. That then goes through. That query is then met with our agent here. Okay, so this query here goes straight to our agent. Now our agent sees this query, which we can see right here. So he can see that it's 548 characters. The record ID is blah, 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 blah. We have a look at our prompt right here. It's a very, very simple prompt. You are an expert at repurposing scripts, making them more engaging for viewers on platforms such as YouTube. I'll probably just add in Instagram and TikTok. That's actually, no, 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 wait. Since this is the Instagram one, we'll do that. So then it just goes, you will repurpose the provide original script, which should be written in a conversational manner with eighth grade reading level. Follow the structure of the original script and do not exceed or reduce the character length of the original script by more than 5%. So that's just an extra kind of constraint as well. You know, don't exceed the character limit of the actual original script. Then we just have some instructions. So yeah, fetch the original script with the corresponding record ID. So it's from there, it's actually going over here and it goes directly down to this fetch original script. Before, as you saw, that actual original script was updated in our air table here, which is the original script. So that's this right here. Now our agent is actually fetching that script. Okay. So we can see it's fetched it right here. It's then returned it to the agent. So now it can understand and actually read the script. Okay. And understand what it needs to repurpose. And then it goes with the motion and repurposes it. Now, of course, I'm using Claude 3.5 Sonnet right here. Uh, yeah, I don't have access to 3.7 on N8 N yet. I'm not sure if they're going to update that soon or later. That doesn't really matter. 3.5 Sonnet is more than enough, to be honest with you. And then we also are passing. Okay, so we're actually putting an output parser as well with this little green toggle right here that you see. And now that parser, all I've said here is just title, title of the script, and then repurpose script, the contents of the repurpose script. Now, the reason why that is, is because I'm actually going to be passing along this information to an Airtable. Okay, so you can see another Airtable node right here. Now, if we click this and open this, this Airtable node will actually get the record ID for this actual script. Okay, so update the corresponding uh, row. And then from there, it's going to be putting in the title that is generated. So in this case, this hidden Instagram setting will 10 times your reach, computer only, whatever. And then a repurpose script as well. So the actual script that it's made, okay? So that will actually update directly within this table. So we can actually see the update for the title right here. And we can also see the repurpose script right here as well. And now we can actually see it going through another loop. Now, the reason for that is simple because we might have five, 10, 50 different videos. So it's gonna be going through one by one, repurposing the scripts one by one, okay? And then once that is done, it pretty much just stops. And then we come back over here and then the YouTube one would start and it will go down and the same process will happen over and over again until it's complete after the TikTok one. And then we're done. Then we're left with, you know, it might be a hundred videos at that point, right? So we can repurpose literally everything that we need to all three platforms using one workflow. And we can also just contact our agent right here, Borg, Okay, which we can just contact via Telegram or we can actually just even if we really, really want to, let's say we're already on the computer and everything, we might be on YouTube, we might be scrolling things on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. We can just save the links and just simply put them in here manually as well. That's also very easy. But let's say we wanted to do all this on our computer, we can definitely do that as well. So we can just open up our Telegram uh, program right here as well on our PC or Mac. We can jump over to, let's say, YouTube. And I say, oh, well, here's a nice video. Let's take this one right here. I'll just go up here, copy that link, come back over here, and then paste that into Telegram. Okay, and you'll see it update right here. And then there we go. 
that's already done we can repurpose that now and as i said before so those previous three videos we can see them as a status is already completed and this one here is to do so we now know which are done which that we need to do as well and i mean at this point if we're already cool with all of this we can just go hey you know what delete these get rid of them and now we have a clean slate as well so a few things to mention here as well if we come down here you'll notice that i have a different setup for instagram a different setup for tiktok a different setup again for youtube now there's a reason for that as well because the tiktok okay if we actually use this api with tiktok and we retrieve the video so same exact thing you'll see the data right here as well if we actually go straight over to whisper okay it won't be read it doesn't understand the file name <coughs> it doesn't understand the mime type i have no idea why so all we have to do is simply change the mime type from video mp4 over to audio mpeg and then it'll, it'll run it'll go straight through whisper will pick up the file and actually recognize it okay so just keep that in mind if you do want to do this at home on your own completing so it'll start off with instagram if you've got instagram videos it'll move on to youtube after that and then finish off with the TikTok as well and just a little bit of information on borg as well uh we can see here the prompt is extremely simple so we have the role you're an efficient url organizer you know i make up names these days to be honest with you it'll understand what i mean and then we have the task you will create rows with social media urls instructions create rows with new urls one receive the user url create a new row with a url output done and that's all i want to see on completion and that's good because we don't want it to always be responding like oh yeah i've done this and ah, i don't care just say done that's enough for me once we want to execute it okay so it says execute and repurpose it here upon user query of execute okay so that's kind of like the keyword that i have to say to execute the other workflow call the execute repurposer so if i say execute and i'll give you a little example execute just like that that will actually call this right here so if we actually go to executions we'll see it running right here oh we won't no there we go the hell was that laggy but anyway we see it running right here so that obviously it's going to go through and take a little bit it generally takes about a minute two minutes maybe i mean it depends how many videos you got um if you've got 500 videos it's not going to be done in 10 seconds i can tell you that it is simply just click and wait for the results very very simple kind of setup here okay so I, I won't actually do this one though so I'll cancel that and this will work really really well with the other agents that I've created for like TikTok, Instagram I also have the YouTube ones as well because we can actually scrape posts from competitors from similar accounts or just trending videos right in general and then use all those links have them in the table and then just simply go over here and start pasting in all the URLs as well but anyway, that's the end of this video and I hope you learned something new today. And if you want to pick up this template or one of the other several templates that I have, come join the school community. I'm always here pretty much literally every day. I have a sad life to be honest at the moment, <laughs> but I really enjoy it. And I'm just making automations 24 seven, to be honest with you. Like, Cause I'm actually living this, making automations for clients as well, doing the school community, making videos, you know, living the automation life. But anyway, I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you again soon.